So today I'm going to show you the key bindings I use and talk about why the default PUBG key bindings are really bad. So this video ended up being a little bit longer than my usual videos, so I've summarized the really important key binds uh, that you should change from the default. So jump and vault should not be the same key bind, or you will accidentally vault when you mean to just jump. Aim slash ADS should not be the same key bind if you're using hold ADS, which is my preference. Default vehicle seat key binds are really uh, bad, so I recommend using custom key binds for vehicle seats. Auto equip attachments in your gameplay functionality should all be on, makes looting significantly faster. Your default fire rates should all be set to full auto. Uh, binding quick marker to left mouse will make it so that as soon as you start shooting you can immediately let your team know what you're shooting at which I think is super helpful and then if your ping is bound to middle mouse which is the default you need to make sure that your reset zeroing is not also bound to middle mouse or your gun your red dot will be reset to whatever the default color is every single time you go to mark something on the minimap so that's kind of the highlights. Now I'll dive into the more extended version of all these concepts, but I just wanted to quickly get these points across. Um, at the end of the day, the important thing to keep in mind is that everyone's key bindings is just personal preference. So I really don't think you should take any one person's opinion on this. I think you should try a couple different key bindings and see what feels best. So to start with, let's look at gameplay. So inventory character render, you may theoretically uh, save a little bit of FPS by turning this off. Colorblind mode, this is all personal preference. I have a whole video on that. Uh, crosshair color, again, personal preferences. I, uh, I like changing it to be a slightly different color just because it's more fun that way. It helps the visibility a little bit. Uh, weapon slot HUD, I like this on just so you can see what guns you have. Kill feed limit, turn, uh, you should turn it up higher than the default in my opinion just to make it easier to see what's happening. Uh, loot glow is what basically this is. When you hover over loot on the ground it'll glow. It can be a little bit easier to see. So you can have this be a dynamic glow or a constant. I prefer the constant. I don't like the dynamic. I find it a little distracting. Whispers doesn't really matter. Uh, so free lick interpol interpolation. So basically what this means is um, if this is on, uh, if you hold alt and look around, if you let go of it, your character will snap to where you're looking, versus if it's off, uh, your character will snap back, your, your field of view will snap back to the direction your character is actually facing. So again, just personal preference. So auto reload. This is the first one that, that's kind of controversial. So uh, with this, the thing to be aware of is that auto reload being on if say you spray all four 30 40 bullets in your magazine and you're caught in the open if you have auto reload on your character will start reloading and uh, while you're reloading you can't sprint so this could slow you down a little bit getting to cover the flip side is if you hit zero bullets need to reload really quickly to take the next fight you can save a tiny bit of time if you don't have to go and press R so personal preference I like to have auto reload on all of your gun firing modes should be full auto with the exception of, in my opinion, the default firing mode for DMRs because this basically just affects the MK uh, that you get from crates. That's really the only gun that's going to apply to. Hide helmet, I, it's all personal preference, I don't care. You get slightly better FPS if you turn off live stream screens. Additional action queuing is an incredibly valuable thing to have on. So default PUBG keybinds, if you uh, say are shooting and you fall off a slight ledge it will force you out of the ADS animation uh, and you won't go back into it automatically if instead you turn on additional action queuing you will uh, immediately go back in ADS as soon as you can so this is very similar to how most shooters work 100% recommend turning on additional action queuing uh, I like this off just so I can see my guns but all the auto equipping attachments I'm a big fan of all of these. They make looting faster. Replay. Um, basically just whether you want to save replay files or not. They use a pretty negligible amount of, of uh, space on your hard drive. 
Death cam, same thing. Uh, network debug statistics. So this just lets you see the ping in the top left corner. So I like to have this on. So now we get to key bindings, which I would say is really the, the meat and potatoes piece. So the first big one is jump slash vault. You do not want jump and vault on the same button because what will happen if you're trying to say bunny hop next to a wall to shoot a gun over, particularly if you have like a shotgun, you'll start vaulting it when you mean to jump. So I 100% recommend you unbind this. So just click on it, click escape to unbind it, and then jump only, space. In my case, I like V for vault only. Crouch is just your personal preference. I like uh, C. Prone for me is X. Interact is F. Toggle perspective is H, but this only matters if you play TPP. Auto run, again, all personal preference. Free look. The next big one is aim slash ADS. So by default, PUBG has it set so that if you right click right mouse once, uh, you'll go into ADS. If you hold right mouse, you'll go into a sort of an enhanced hip fire aim, which they call aim. Uh, if you are going to use hold ADS, it is critical that you don't use aim slash ADS as right mouse because if you're using hold ADS and your aim slash ADS is both bound to right mouse, there'll be a significant delay when you ADS. So what you want to do is set that to be two separate keys. So I unbind them. My aim is caps lock. My ADS is right mouse. Candid sights, you should, honestly, candid sights are pretty bad in my opinion. I don't really use them. I don't think there's a good reason to. This is personal preference. Some people like to disable the scroll wheel for weapon swap so that they don't accidentally weapon swap and they don't mean to. I, I, I leave it on. Uh, I don't really use weapon swap with scroll wheel ever, but it's convenient every now and then. Uh, left and right peaks, just personal preference. So holster weapons, I don't... Uh, I usually have that bound to tilde. Equip frag grenade. So here's where there's a lot of value in coming up with custom binds. So some people prefer to use the grenade wheel that you get when you hold G. Some people like to select each throwable individually. It's all personal preference. All right, ADS, zoom in and out, pretty common. Zeroing, you can really set that to whatever you want. So an important keybind that I would delete is uh, by default, middle mouse is both marker and reset zeroing. The reason this is bad is when you, uh, say, you've, say you've swapped, you've used zeroing to change your red dots shape to a different shape. If you press middle mouse, it'll go back to the default. So say you've changed it to the green red dot instead of the red red dot. Uh, if you press middle mouse to mark something, it'll go back to the red one. So I would recommend deleting that. I would recommend is uh, binding something to be your first aid key, because first aids are t typically the type of med you're going to use them the most often. All right, so looking at vehicle key bindings, here's another area that the default key bindings are pretty bad. Motorcycle, the default key binds can be a little finicky um, because of what keybinds I use for my tilting. Uh, I don't like E and Q. I use left mouse and right mouse because I use E and Q as seat swap keys. So tipping the motorcycle midair is it doesn't work because you'll you'll seat swap while you're trying to do it. Here's the big one to change. So. This is awkward as hell to do drive-bys with these default vehicle seat binds. So I recommend Shift W and W. So what this means is when you hop into a car, you just walk up to a car, press F to get into it, and just immediately take off if you're holding Shift space. Uh, I like E. I like Q, and then C4 is C. Again, all personal preference. I just recommend putting some custom binds in there because the default are really bad. All right, so looking at UI, what I like to do is uh, put quick marker to be left mouse because this what this means is when you're shooting uh, at your gun it'll immediately put a little beam up the top of your uh, compass showing your teammates what which direction you're shooting at fall wheels like I said before G, or G for grenade and the tilde key for heal items so if you have your unarmed key bound like I do you're gonna wanna get rid of that so they don't conflict all right, so looking at controls, there's a couple things I want to highlight. First off is that the default sensitivity is way too high. It's incredibly awkward, and uh, you'll never be precise on this high of a sensitivity. So at 800 DPI, I like to use 35 
and then 28 for all for all of my sensitivities. I like to turn on individual scope sensitivities. So you can adjust them all individually. And then set these to 27. All right, so the next big thing is aim and ADS. So aim is the hip fire aim. So I prefer to have that on hold. And then I have ADS on hold. All right, so the next thing is audio. And as you can tell, there's this annoying, loud-ass music that you should immediately turn off. Now with that done, <laughs> we can look at the other things. I recommend leaving remastered volume sounds. I think the audio balancing is a little bit better. But if you like the older sounds, you can turn them on. Unfortunately, it's all or nothing. You either get legacy sounds or you get the new song sounds. HRTF should be on. This has a significantly positive effect on your ability to hear uh, gunshots and gauge directionality. All right, so moving on to graphics. I'll show you what I use to, and the, these are what I've found to give me the best FPS on my computer setup at 1440p. So again, a lot of this is personal preference. A lot of this is what you think makes you the best able to see enemies. So what I like to do is cap my FPS to 200. This has a positive effect in terms of stability in my opinion. You you notice less micro stutters when um, a couple patches ago it was particularly noticeable where your FPS would spike up to 200, 300 and then you'd get a little micro stutter and it would temporarily drop to 60 and uh, capping it can help with that. All right, render scale, I recommend 100, 120 will give you better looking graphics, but it'll make it slower. Um, you'll get less frames. FOVs, personal preference, I like 93. Anti-aliasing, post-processing, setting these to very low will give you more FPS. Shadows, very low, will give you more FPS. Uh, low will let you see slightly more shadows of players, so you'll see dynamic shadows a little bit more clearly, so I like low. Textures, medium, I found that to be a good balance between the game looking nice and still getting pretty good FPS. Interestingly enough, I actually got slightly worse FPS if I set them to very low. I don't know if this is because the load is migrating from your graphics card to your processor or something else. So effects, I like these on very low, low be better FPS, and I think it helps you seize through smokes and fires a little bit better. Foliage, very low. View distance, very low. Sharpen on or off, uh, you'll get slightly better FPS with sharpen off. Um, some people find that they can see a little bit better with sharpen on. V-Sync, you should always have this off. V-Sync's terrible. Same with motion blur. That should just always be off. So there's three DirectX versions. You have DirectX 12, DirectX 11, DirectX 11 Enhanced. DirectX 11 Enhanced gives me the best frame rate. So DirectX 12 gives me slight about about the same and sometimes in certain situations slightly better FPS. However, I was getting a lot of crashes with DirectX 12, so that's why I like DirectX 11. I get more FPS than DirectX 11 with the DirectX 11 Enhanced, but I don't get any crashes, so I use DXC 11 Enhanced. Alright, so the next thing to look at is your NVIDIA control panel settings. These are the settings that I've found to be the most useful in terms of FPS and visibility. So the bulk of these are left to the default. I would recommend changing your power management mode to be maximum performance. If you are on a desktop power management, it's really not a big deal anyway. Uh, V-Sync, you should have this uh, off. And then uh, the other big change I would make is go to your display and then go to adjust desktop color settings. Um, I like to set the gamma slightly higher. I find it a little bit easier to see. And the other big change I like to make is the digital vibrance. I increase digital vibrance. So this makes it a little bit easier to see on PUBG as well. So again, all I'd really like to highlight that the bulk of these you're, are, you should play around with yourself. See what key bindings feel comfortable. See what you like and dislike and uh, just take the time to experiment. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, just put them down below. Uh, let me know if there's different settings that you prefer. 
Uh, I got a couple people that had asked for this video, so it's it's a little bit longer and it's a little bit more just stream of consciousness than my usual videos. But thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate it. If you like these videos, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to continue making these as long as people are getting some value out of them. Thanks.